Now, I'd like you all to try a problem on your own. So let's graph P of T equals 1200 times left parentheses, 1.06 right parentheses to the T. Graph it with Desmos so that you can see the important features of the graph in the graphing window, which means you're going to have to move the graphing window around a little bit to see what's going on. And then I want you to go ahead and sketch that graph below and label those important features. There's a few questions to answer, so give those a try too. Again, this is one of those places where it's really easy to watch me, but it's much harder to do it yourself. And you've got to know how much you're able to do on your own right now. So do give this one a try and then just come back if you get stuck and I'll give you some help. Okay, we're back. The first thing I'm gonna do is go over to Desmos and graph this P of T function. Now I've typed in P of T equals 1200 times parentheses 1.06, close the parentheses to the T power, and I see nothing. And of course, that's because the initial value of this graph is 1200. So if I'm not looking at at least 1200, I am not going to see this graph. And if you start to zoom, you're going to see it's going to take you a while to get up to 1200. And in fact, when you do get up to 1200, the graph looks kind of wonky because of the huge x-axis that we have here. So I'm actually going to change the x-axis values by going into the wrench menu and choosing an x-axis that's more like from 0 to 50. And then I'll move it over just a little bit. Now it seems like a more reasonable graph. Okay, so I've got a y-intercept here of 0, 1200. And certainly I can find some other points as well. You can move your cursor along the graph, but if you find that kind of difficult to do, remember that you could also just generate a table of values by clicking on the gear icon and then asking for a table of values. Now when I ask for that table of values, I get all of these errors. And if you click on one of the errors, you'll see the column header can't be defined elsewhere in the calculator. The problem is I've got T defined up here, right? So if I just change this to a T sub 1, and P of T sub 1, it will fill out the table for me and give me some points on the graph. So that's kind of nice. And I can always change a few of these points on the graph as well. So if I want to have uh, values that say negative uh, 5, I can change that one. Or positive 5, I can change, say, the 2 to a positive 5. So now I have some values I can graph. One of the important things to pay attention to might be where is that horizontal asymptote. To see that, just zoom out a ways, and you can see that again, the horizontal asymptote actually falls right there on the x-axis. This is a standard exponential model with no transformations to it. So I'm going to go back over to the notes and give this graph a little sketch. One of the very important features is that it has a y-intercept of 1200, so I'm just going to draw that in. And I'm actually just going to scale from that. So go halfway down from 1200 and we'll make that 600 and go up and equal a number of units and we'll make that 800, right? And I know the graph goes down and approaches the x axis and goes up from 1200. It's an increasing graph. The B value here is 1.06, so it's going to be exponential growth. If we want to label something on the x axis, we can go back to our chart here and see like at 5 we would have a value of 1605. I'm probably a little bit off here, but I, remember I can put the 5 wherever I want. So if this is 1605 as a point, I can just label the x-axis down there with 5. And then I've got some scale to my graph. It's kind of a clever way to do it. All right, now we want to actually find P of 5, and we actually looked at that point just a second ago and know it's going to come out to be 1605. Uh, but let's go ahead and go through the calculation so that I'm sure you know what you're doing here. We would do uh, P of 5 equals 1200 times 1 1.06 to the fifth power. So when we calculate that, you want to do the power first. So 1.06 to the fifth power, which gives us 1.3382, and that's a rounded number. And then I would need to do 1200 times that 1.3382, which gives us approximately 1606. So this point, P of 5, is 
5 comma 1606. And that's certainly what we saw on the graph in Desmos as well. Next, we want to show how to find the y-intercept algebraically. So if we want the y-intercept, then we want the other variable to be 0. So in this case, we're going to let t equal 0. And if we do that, we'll have p of 0 equals 1200 times 1 1.06 to the 0. And that would be 1200 times 1. There's our exponent skills at work, or just 1200. And of course, we knew that our y-intercept was 1200, but this just lets us prove that we can do it algebraically. Last question is, when is p of t equal to 2,000? So 2,000 is actually above the scale I've drawn here just a little bit. I could put a horizontal line at 2,000 and see where that horizontal line hits the graph. Essentially what I'm trying to solve here is 2,000 equals 1,200 times 1 1.06 to the t. Now the problem is we don't know how to solve that yet. But we can do it with technology, and that's what we're going to do. In Desmos, we can add y equals 2,000 to the graph, zoom in a little bit, and uh, just tap where we have an intersection point. And we can see the intersection's at 8.767 comma 2,000. So when is p of t equal to 2,000? It's when t equals 8.767. And we could even kind of graph that over here. Uh, 8.767 is where we've got that 2,000 value. All right, I have another challenge for you. I would like you to list six properties of C of n equals 5,000 times left parentheses, 0 0.95 right parentheses to the n. Pause the video and see if you can give that six properties. Okay, we're back. Let's see how many properties we can actually list without graphing this. I bet we can get quite a few. So let's start with this. The initial value is 5,000. Now you don't want to just say a equals 5,000 because you haven't defined what a is. So you do need to say the initial value is 5,000. What else do we know? Well, we know the growth factor. And again, we'll write that out. The growth factor is 0 0.95, which means that the rate of decrease is 5%. And I don't have to say negative 5% because I said the word decrease. If I just said the rate of change, then I would have to say is negative 5%. See the difference between those two? Okay, what else? Well, I know that for any exponential function, the domain is all real numbers, or negative infinity in parentheses to positive infinity in another parentheses. I also know that the range, as long as there's no transformations, would be from left parentheses 0 to infinity, right parentheses. I know that this is a decreasing function. It's exponential decay because this b value is between 0 and 1. So I can say that this is exponential decay. I could say it's always decreasing. So it's decreasing on the interval from negative infinity to infinity. That means it's never increasing. And perhaps one other thing I could say is that its y-intercept is 0, 5,000. So they go 10 properties, and I didn't even have to graph it. Don't get so caught up in looking at the graph with technology that you leave behind what you already know about the function. Let's go through this final problem together. This is real data from Iceland about the number of international visitors to Iceland. It is an exponential function. It's given by v of t equals 412.8 times left parentheses 1.27 right parentheses to the t. t is the number of years since 2010. I'm just going to highlight it. T is the number of years since 2010, so that's one declaration. And V is the number of international visitors to Iceland in thousands. Okay, so how many visitors did Iceland have in 2010? Well, 2010 is when T equals zero. 
And if we plug in 0 to this function, v of 0 equals 412.8 times left parentheses 1.27 right parentheses to the 0. Well, when we take something to the 0 power, that's 1, and so we'll be left with 412.8 times 1, or just 412.8. That doesn't mean that Iceland had 412.8 visitors. It means that they had 412.8 thousand visitors, and that would be 412,800 visitors in the year 2010. Okay, let's find V of 10 and interpret that in a sentence. So V of 10 would be 412.8 times, left parentheses, 1.27, right parentheses, to the 10th power. Now what do we do first? Do we do 412.8 times 1.27 or 1.27 to the 10th power? Well, if you think back to order of operations, it's parentheses, then exponents, then multiplication and division. So we want to do the 1.27 to the 10th power first. And that gives us 10.9153, and I'm rounding there. So 412.8 times 10.9153. And then multiplying that times 412.8 gives us 4505.8. 5, 2. Again, I'm rounding, and now I've got to interpret the answer in a sentence. So V of 10 is 10 years since 2010. That would be 2020. The time I'm recording this video, that's in the future. So in 2020, Iceland should expect 4505, and then I'm multiplying by 1,000, 852. So 4,505,852 visitors. That is a lot more visitors than 412,800. Now by what percent per year does the number of visitors grow? Well let's just look at the growth factor. We know that the growth factor b is 1.27 and this is 1 plus the r value which means that the r value must be 0.27 or 27 percent. The number of visitors is growing at 27 percent per year, which is an astounding growth rate for something like this. Now, based on this model, when is the number of visitors predicted to be 8 million? Well, 8 million, the first thing we need to do is convert it to a number in thousands. So 8 million is actually 8,000 thousands. So we want to solve 8,000 equals 412.8 times 1.27 to the t. And again, we haven't learned how to solve those yet, but we can graph the left side, which would be y equals 8,000, and we could graph the right side, y equals 412.8 times 1.27 to the t. And if we graph both sides, all we need to do is look for the intersection point, right? We can always use this as a method of solving an equation. So let's go to a graph. I've got the graph of y equals 412.8 times 1.27 to the t. See, it's increasing very rapidly. Going through the points that we talked about, which would be 0, 412.8, and we looked at the value at 10, which was 4505.85. So you can get a sense for how fast the graph is growing. I'm going to include now y equals 8,000 on this graph and I see an intersection point at 12.402 comma 8,000. So at t equals 12.4, we'll just say 12.4-ish, right? Um, and so what year is that? Uh, when is the number of visitors predicted to be 8 million? Well, that would be 12.4 years after 2010. So that would be the year 2022. That would be the year we hit 8,000 visitors or 8 million visitors. So we'd say 8 million visitors in 2022. Maybe that deserves an exclamation point.